Thanks to Envato Elements for sponsoring this video. For more information, check the affiliate link in the description. Having an absolute beast of a computer was something I'd been wanting for such a long time now and pair that with the fact that my old system was starting to die down, it was overdue for a replacement that would hold up for years to come for the kind of work I'm looking to be doing and save me a lot of time and headaches. With that being said, there was a lot of stress and headaches in the process of building out this system which I'm gonna share with you today. Now, I wanted to have a pretty high-end computer so I could then focus on doing the work without compromise so I knew this wasn't gonna be cheap, but it has been a worthwhile investment. I'm now able to make more videos faster moving forward with this YouTube channel as well, so remember, time equals money, so it all makes sense. It makes so much sense, it's making dollars. I had little to no experience with the hardware side of things, it was my first time doing it, but I wanted to get all the components separately and put them together afterwards. However, I completely underestimated how hard it would be to pull it off, but fortunately though, I did have help. My friend Darren from Liverpool, or Dazer as we call him in CSGO, Oh my God. <laughs> has a lot of experience when it comes to computers in general so he helped me pick the parts based on what I needed and this is the list of components we ended up with along with the cost. Let's first talk about the CPU which is a 12th generation i7. I use After Effects for pretty much all of my motion design and visual effects work so having a fast CPU was very important considering After Effects as well as Photoshop and Illustrator are heavily dependent on the CPU. Alongside that, I also wanted to have as much RAM as the Asus Tough Gaming H670 Pro motherboard could possibly handle which is 128GB of DDR4 at 3200MHz. Then there's the most exciting component, the RTX 3090 GPU which I had been wanting to get ever since it came out. And trust me, this thing is a monster. I use Blender for my 3D work and seeing as most 3D software utilize the GPU for fast render times, then it was a no brainer. It also helps with making decisions faster because of the quick feedback that you get while working instead of having to wait around for something to render. Again, it's all about saving time. Also, I've been using DaVinci Resolve now, which makes great use of the GPU when editing videos, so that's an added bonus. There are also three SSD NVMe M.2 drives, which make for a pretty clean looking case, first of all, because you don't have any of those chunky hard drives, and it helps with airflow, but more importantly, you get incredibly high read and write speeds, which is great because most of the time I'm using 4K or even 6K footage, so I want those files to load up quickly. The 500 gigabyte one is reserved for my operating system, programs, and games. One terabyte is reserved for the project files of stuff I'm currently working on. And the other one terabyte is also reserved for project files as well as for cache files that are generated by the software I use. It's always good to separate your operating system and programs drive from the project files and cache drive so that you don't slow things down and in case your main drive fails then you avoid losing all of your precious project files. Then we have the other parts such as the PSU and CPU cooler all tucked inside the visually pleasing case Deepcool CL500 which has some pretty nice features such as the magnetic panels along with a bunch of USB ports at the top which come in handy because I keep the PC on the desk and it's always a hassle whenever I have to connect something to the back of it. It's a minimal sleek looking case which I prefer but if you have a glass panel on the side then you could as well throw a party in there. Once all the components were shipped and ready to go, my friend Benji then came over to the office to help me put it all together. And this is when it all started going downhill. Shit. This looks a bit damaged, but let's hope it's not too damaged. The first mistake I made was prior to starting the PC build, I hadn't opened any of the boxes from the components that had arrived. So the lesson learned, always open up the boxes you receive and check to make sure that they're not damaged so you can return them immediately. Now the second mistake, 
Because I was all excited, I went ahead and told Benji to mount the CPU anyway. So he then proceeded with the rest of the build, put everything together, and was finally able to turn the PC on. That's when we realized that two of the RAM slots were not working, and that was also because of the bent pins, so I was left with only 64 gigabytes of RAM. Another issue I noticed was that the PSU would make this weird high-pitched sound, which I guess was due to it somehow being damaged upon shipping. And the other thing was that I encountered so many crashes to the point where the PC literally shut down and it wouldn't turn back on. What the hell? So I called a guy who owns a local computer shop and had him open everything back up just to find that there were these burnt spots on the CPU. The CPU had literally been fried. So now I start to panic, but I get an idea. How about I send these over for service? So the service guy checks it out and tells me that the CPU is dead and the pins on the motherboard are so damaged that they're irreparable. Now I try to replace the motherboard, CPU and PSU because of that annoying noise by using the warranty, but that isn't valid anymore because they were physically damaged. So about a thousand euros went down the drain. But I guess on the bright side, everything else survived. So I got replacements for each damaged component and everything was back to running normally until I started encountering random freezing while working. And now I'm panicking again because I just switched out so many components and they're brand new, but it's still crashing. So I'm thinking, what if the motherboard that tried the CPU somehow also damaged the GPU? Or maybe even damaged the RAM the or this or that? But after a couple of days of extensive testing with benchmark software such as Furmark, CPU-Z and monitoring all the components with the HW Info software, I managed to find the issue, which was high temperature. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. See, when I remounted the CPU cooler after installing the new CPU, I mounted one of the fans the wrong way as a result of not reading the manual, which then didn't cool it properly, causing the CPU temperature to go up. And what I learned was that computers normally freeze once a component reaches a specific temperature to avoid having a complete meltdown. So I switched the fan around, but I was still getting high temperatures on the GPU. Because I had been using DaVinci Resolve for editing as well as Blender for 3D rendering, the GPU was getting very hot because the fans weren't properly set up to spin fast enough in order to keep it cool. You would think that things melt due to high temperatures, but no, they freeze instead. So I then used this software called MSI Afterburner, which allows you to automatically set the fan speed of your GPU depending on the temperature. And that fixed the issue by making sure the temperature never goes high enough to cause a freeze. Although that does mean that now, whenever I render stuff, my computer turns into a truck. Now, would I ever go through this hassle again? Well, first of all, it was quite rewarding and fun, even though it was stressful. It took a lot of time to research, pick the parts, wait for them to arrive, only to find out that half of them are damaged. But the thing is that I learned so much along the way that I'm now equipped to make better decisions in the future. So were those lessons worth it? Although expensive, I would say they were totally worth it. Although don't be afraid to ask for help from your friends like I did with Dazzer by bombarding him with a bunch of messages or even pay a professional to take care of it for you because at least that way you're spending money but spare yourself from potentially spending a <laughs> ton of money by messing things up. Thank you for coming along with me on this rather bumpy journey and I hope you were able to take something away from it so you can avoid making the same mistakes as I did. I'm sure most of you who have experience with building computers probably cringed quite a few times throughout this video. Anyway, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace out.